All right, so picture this. You're at the checkout, about to snag those shoes. You know the ones. Uh-huh. You're a little short on cash, and your phone just buzzes. Yeah. A, it says, we see you need a little something. Loan approved. Just like that. Wow. Based on, well, your phone itself. Yeah. It sounds pretty wild, right? It's like straight out of sci-fi or something. It does make you wonder, though, where's the line? And that's exactly what we're diving into today. Flow Jamaica, the telecom company, they've rolled out this program, MYNE Lend, microloans right there, mm -hmm. and they're using your phone habits to decide. Like what kind of phone habits are we even talking about here? Think about it, how often you call, how much data you use, even if you pay your phone bill on time. Huh. So it's like they're saying your phone is a window into your entire financial life. That's one way to put it. And Flo's pitching this whole thing is financial inclusion, right? Hmm. Helping people get credit even without a traditional credit score. Sounds good on paper, but... But then they slip in the whole opt-in thing, and that's where I start to get a little uneasy. Yeah. You know? Well, uneasy might be putting it mildly. The document we're looking at today, it raises some serious red flags about this opting in hmm. and whether it really holds up against, you know, the law. Okay, so we're talking potential legal issues here. Oh, yeah. See, Jamaica has this Data Protection Act, right? And there's a whole section, Section 23, that's all about making sure companies have a good reason for using your data. Do you agree to let them use your data for loan decisions when you signed up for your phone plan? It's not like I signed up to be financially evaluated. I just want to make calls and scroll through cat videos. Right. And the source we're looking at, they make a really good point about informed consent, like just burying that kind of data usage in a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo that's not really telling people what they're signing up for. And what about those folks who might actually need this program, the ones without those traditional credit scores? What if their phone habits don't actually reflect their financial situation? There you go. Yeah. That's where the potential for discrimination rears its ugly head, which Jamaica's Data Protection Act directly addresses in Section 11, by the way. It's like saying, oh, you drive a beat up old car, must be bad with money. Not necessarily, right? Maybe you inherited it. Maybe you're a whiz at fixing it up yourself. Makes you wonder how they're even connecting those dots. Are they just making assumptions based on flimsy data? Well, that's the thing about data, right? It mm. can be interpreted in so many ways. And without the full context, it's easy to draw inaccurate and frankly unfair conclusions. And this whole situation, it reminds me of that whole thing with Experian in the UK. Experian, that rings a bell. They're a credit reporting company, right? Massive credit reporting agency, yeah. And they got themselves into some serious hot water for using personal data in ways that were, shall we say, not originally intended. Okay, spill the tea. What'd they do? So imagine this, you're at the grocery store, swiping your loyalty card, getting those sweet, sweet points on your weekly shop. Been there, done that, got the free baguette to prove it. Right. So Experian, they were taking that data, those grocery store purchases, and using it to influence people's credit scores and loan approvals, all without properly informing people, of course. Wait, hold up. You mean to tell me my love for discount cheddar could impact my ability to get a mortgage? That's nuts. That's what everyone was saying. It was a whole big thing. Huge fines for violating data privacy laws, public outrage, the whole nine yards, really made everyone wake up and realize how much data these companies are scooping up and using in ways we never even imagined. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely getting some major Big Brother vibes here. And it makes you wonder, if Flo's using your phone habits to assess you for a loan, what's stopping them from sharing that data with, like, insurance companies mm -hmm. or potential employers. A chilling thought, isn't it? And that brings us to another critical aspect of data protection, how long they can hold on to this information for what purposes. It's all there in black and white in Jamaica's Data Protection Act, specifically sections 25 and 26. Right, because it's one thing to say, we're using this data for this specific program, yeah. but it's a whole different ball game if they're just hoarding it indefinitely, right? Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. And those sections I mentioned, they cover data minimization and purpose limitation. Basically, companies should only collect the bare minimum data they need, and they can't just use it for whatever they want down the line without your knowledge and consent. So in the case of MYNE Lend, the question is, is Flow being upfront about how long they're keeping this data and what they might do with it later on? A million dollar question, right? And here's another wrinkle for you. It's not just Flow in the mix, is it? They've partnered with JMMB, the financial institution. Oh, right. I almost forgot about that. So now you've got your phone company and your bank, both with their hands in the data cookie jar. Precisely. And each additional player in this data sharing ecosystem, well, it just adds another layer of complexity and risk. It's giving me flashbacks to that game telephone. 
we used to play as kids. You whisper a message around a circle, and it ends up completely garbled by the end. Ah, I love that analogy. Except in this case, it's not a silly secret. We're talking about sensitive financial information. And with all the data breaches and cyber attacks these days, it makes you wonder how secure any of this information actually is. It's like, okay, yeah, hackers are scary and all, but what about the people who actually work at these companies? Who's watching them? What's to stop someone from, like, snooping around or selling this info on the dark web or something? That's the thing, right? It all boils down to transparency and control. Do we even know what we're agreeing to when we sign up for this stuff? Do we have any say in how our data is being used? These are questions we should all be asking. It feels like we're constantly being pulled in two different directions. Mm -hmm. On one hand, we've got this promise of like ultimate convenience, instant loans, financial inclusion, all at our fingertips. But then on the other hand, are we giving up our privacy for all this supposed progress? It's almost like, is this too good to be true? Right, and that's exactly why it's more important now than ever to be informed. It's not about like rejecting every new technology, but it's about understanding what you're getting into and making choices you feel good about. So for those of us who aren't like tech wizards or privacy lawyers, what can we actually do? I'm gonna be honest with you, I usually just scroll to the bottom and click agree. Who's actually reading those novels they call terms and conditions? You're preaching to the choir. Let's be real, those things are designed to be confusing. But here's the thing. You can look for summaries, you know. Ask the companies directly how they're using your data. Support organizations that are fighting for better consumer protection. So it's about taking back some control. 100%. Knowledge is power. The more you know about how your data is being used, the better decisions you can make about the technology you let into your life. So like, let's say MYNE Lend existed here, not just in Jamaica. First thing I do is go to their website and see if they even explain what data they're collecting, how they're using it, who they're sharing it with. If I can't find that info easily, yeah, that's a hard pass for me. Exactly. Don't be afraid to ask those questions. Demand transparency. And never forget, you have a right to say no if you're not okay with how your data is being used. So wrapping up this little deep dive here, I think the big takeaway is this. The future of finance, the future of technology, it's all about our data now. And it's on us to stay informed, ask the tough questions, and make choices that align with our values. Couldn't have said it better myself. The more we know about what's at stake, the better equipped we'll be to navigate this, uh, this brave new world of data-driven everything. And on that note, we'll leave you with a little something to think about. What does your digital footprint say about you? And who are you comfortable sharing that with? Until next time, stay curious.